So now let's get to this thing and you can kind of move in close so you can see it. And we'll talk a little bit about, okay, I'm not that scary. <laughs> <laughs> um, what you can see over there is Chen, our mechanical engineer is gonna run this for me just cause so I don't have to run back and forth. But way on the right in the gray at the bottom, it says 1.0, that's one inch of static pressure. And you can see this reads a little high, right? We already talked about that, right? And he's gonna have this set at right now 350 CFM, right? And if you look to the left of that, you'll see what the air station is measuring, which is the 1.01 right now, and it's kind of bouncing right about 1.0, right? So very close. The next one is the valve feedback. And then the one after that is what the air station says. So the key is for all of those numbers to line up so that the red and the green up above, where that's bouncing around, stays within plus or minus 5%. And so you can see it's pretty much right there right now. So this is a 0.6 to 3 inch water column valve. And if I close the valve by this on the back here, right, and get this down to about the 0.6 tenths, I'm gonna go down as low as I can here on this. Like I say, it's off by a few tenths. I just drove it too far. So I'll get up a little, I'm about 0.8, but you'll see I'm right at the edge because I'm pushing this on the edge. 50% of the flow shut off, right? But still holding plus minus five. Now, if I bring this back, you see how fast that thing reacted, right? Mm -hmm. This is kind of anticlimactic compared to what you have to go through in the Phoenix 101 where they're gonna give you a lot of detail about this. But at the end of the day, it, it works. And I can go all the way and come back and you'll see it pop right back within a second or two. Now, <laughs> Pay attention to that because you notice it took a second. Mm. The reason it did that is because the air station is using this up inside about 75 feet of air duct. And this will slow down really fast if I shut it off, but then it's gotta start up again. So the air station trying to take accurate measurements take longer. In the field, that doesn't happen because you have a giant fan providing enough, enough static to run everything. Mm. And regardless of what you open and close, it's not looking to measure anything, it just keeps pushing static out. So um, drive this up to say two inches, Chen, and you'll hear the flow start to increase. And it's a good time to mention that we do sound testing for all the product. So everything has NC and RC ratings on it and you can pull up the catalog for every flow and every pressure on what the sound is gonna be. And the design of the valve is such that it optimizes and minimizes noise, especially at high frequencies. But in case there's some high frequencies that you want to eliminate, we offer a neutralizer product, which enables you to decrease the sound even further. In some applications, it might be beneficial. So again, I'm up, up at two. I'm going to drive this down to well below. I'm going to go down really low here, I'm trying to get it in at the bottom, and then also get set up. Right at the so bottom. You're close to shut. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm close to shut here, yes. Okay. So, right, I, I wanted to pull it in, and you can see now I'm 75% shut off, right? And I'm still within plus or minus five. If I open it up all the way, I should very quickly stay within the plus or minus five there as the air station tries to catch up, right? And if you run to, say, 500, now, wait, Chen. So now, let me try something else. Right now, what we're doing is we're not running any electronics. We're not putting any stress on actuators uh, or electronic components. It's sitting idle. It doesn't use a lot of current, right? But when you really need fast performance and fast acting, that's when everything goes into play. So I'm gonna change now the flow requirement of this to say 500 CFM. Now, by the time you look back and forth, it's already done. So you missed the cone, but you saw the screen. So we'll do that a couple times and again, I can kind of tweak this back and forth here and even shut this off further. I have a little more static. Try and drive it right to the lower end here and see what I get just for fun. And you can see I'm down to half an inch on this now, very low, but again, on the thing. And if I pull that back, you can see how quickly it comes in. It doesn't it doesn't oscillate, it doesn't dampen. And the same thing with the actuator. It doesn't dampen either, right? It didn't bounce around. You can see a little push, but then the algorithms we have in the actuator really perform well. We've optimized them over years and years of testing so that every valve operates the same way, all right? So now we can say go to three inches of stack. 
And you can see I pegged the needle, which is this three inch magnet helix here, and it's still functioning and it's still plus or minus five because we do give a little bit of over the tolerances of our valves. Go to four. And you can see the cone is moving in. It's actually doing what it's supposed to do. And I can continue to squeeze this off. And the, the noise you're hearing is from this damper. It's not from the valve. And you can see I really have a jet of air going out there. So if you guys are sweating and hot, then this will cool you down a bit. And then if I open it up, it'll come right back within a second. All right. So now, Chen, if you'll drop this down to say, one inch static pressure again, I don't know if the number. The other thing we can do is we always like to demonstrate what goes on with the Kim ones to show you what happens if these claw. The, the, the inherent design of this, not using a, we're gonna give it a second uh, before you put anything in because the air station's going down. So it adapts to any interference here, similar to what I just did with the damper. Right? It doesn't matter if it's a Kim wipe or a damper. It may make a heck of a rattling noise in there for some of the researchers for a short time if you drop something in. And obviously, if you block the whole thing, it would be a problem. But under most circumstances, dust, dander, bedding, lint, all of those things, they won't be impacted by this at all, even after years and years. And the other reason is because the velocity of air through that venturi is very fast, so things don't stick to it. So. Okay, I think we're there. You can uh, throw a few in there. And we've got some caught in there, and that's probably fine for now. Okay. Good. Yep, and you can see right now, he threw in a bunch of things. There's three or four at the front of the valve, blocking all the way over there. Mm -hmm. Can you see? You may have to look there. Mm -hmm. All right, yep. And all of those things are blocking, but no change in performance of the valve wow. in the airflow. Okay. So, and if you go up to 800 CFM, pick a number. And you'll watch the actuator. It's already there, it didn't have far to go, but it's up, it's in. I don't quite have an inch yet, so give it, yeah, it's, when it was within an inch, it was good. So, or six tenths, as you can see, it's only at three here, so I'm guessing it's six. So we do lose a little performance because I cut a chunk of the valve out too. So minor detail, but just be aware, it doesn't work as good when you have a hole in it. So, okay. So these also have fail safe. So I think you probably already know that. Fail open, fail closed, or fail to any position. So, and that also functions on this as well. So that's the quick uh, overview. Can you lower that down a little? Uh, 